Hey everybody, my name is Angie Balserini. I'm the Community Engagement Manager at Filmstreams in Omaha, Nebraska. Let's talk about how film builds community. Welcome to Community Connects, our new digital expression of our community development program, which fosters dialogue about important issues in our community. April is here and Earth Day is near. We're gonna chat with some folks from some local organizations about how they recognize and celebrate our natural world. Today we're gonna to talk with Stephanie Finklia, the Director of Education at The Big Garden, and Amy Mather, the Adult Services Manager at Omaha Public Library. Um, first, thank you so much for being here with me. Um, I'm a huge fan of Big Garden because that is how I learned how to garden last year. <laughs> um, so, Stephanie, tell us a little bit, um, tell us about the Big Garden and a little bit about you and your role there. The Big Garden is a nonprofit organization. We're based in North Omaha. We teach anywhere from, you know, three-year-olds up to adults about how to grow their own food, how to cook their own food, and how to preserve their own food, um, because we believe that food is a right. Um, I am the director of education at the Big Garden, so I oversee our Garden to Table program, which is an after-school program for middle schoolers. Our farm to school program, which um, on a non-COVID year would be going into classrooms uh, during the school day of elementary schools and taking them outside to the school garden that we've built um, to grow food with them. Um, we have a growing gardeners workshop program that we partner with City Sprouts and Mole Halls to put it, present. Um, anybody is welcome to attend those courses. Uh, upcoming, we will have our plant sale that runs from April 15th to May 15th. Um, you can purchase uh, purchase seedlings online, or you can come to our physical location and shop for seedlings. All proceeds go to our educational programs and to emergency food relief. Um, you can find more information about that at biggarden.org slash plant sale. Um, yeah, I, I've enjoyed my time with the Big Garden. I've been there, this is my fourth year. And awesome. I love the way that we've been growing and, and, and moving. And, and developing relationships within the community. Are there any other upcoming opportunities and ways for for our local, like for us to support you? April showers is, so April showers is our month long fundraiser that we're having for the big garden. Um, since Omaha Gives is no longer um, an organization, um, we still need to find a way to, to continue our work. Um, there'll be several opportunities to give throughout the month. Um, you can find more information about that at biggarden.org uh, slash April showers. You can also text April showers to 44321 to support right now. Is a great one about seed saving and the people that are doing that work called Seed the Untold Story. Um, there's a great documentary that was done about the urban growers in Detroit, it came out in 2011 called Urban Roots. Um, there's one on indigenous food sovereignty called Gathering, or excuse me, not Gathering, Gather. And then one coming out in 2021 called Rooted. And that is about um, food apartheid. The term food apartheid. Uh, can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so it used to be, it was food deserts at one time because the thought was that there was, it was barren and that there was nothing there. Um, but the thing is that deserts are naturally occurring. Right, and there are things that do live there and thrive there. Um, so I've heard the term as well, food swamp, 
Um, but I really think food apartheid really, really sums up what's happening because it is an intentional effort. Um, people are intentionally withdrawing those grocery stores. They're intentionally creating um, inequitable spaces uh, around food. So yeah, calling it what it is, which is food apartheid, um, is a more accurate term. That this is a system that is working <laughs> exactly as it was, it was proposed to do. Tell us a little bit about that food sustainability, like the, the overall underlying mission. Well, um, it's it's many parts, right? Um, it is creating a more sustainable food system in relationship to the earth, um, in maintaining the ecosystems of the earth. Um, it's about food justice around labor. Um, most of uh, the folks in agricultural businesses uh, are the pickers, are the harvesters, and they're black and brown folks. Um, and so making sure that they are given fair wages and uh, hospitable places to live. Um, it is establishing a large local food system, eliminating all of the um, pollution uh, involved in transporting food and and um, making sure that that areas right here um, are are supported by by food. Um, it is making sure that people have culturally appropriate food. Um, you know, you don't find a lot of that in grocery chains. You know, they're catering to a large population, which it's not necessarily black and brown folks. Um, so if we can grow our own, we can grow those foods that, that um, speak to us and are traditionally our heritage foods. Awesome. Awesome. I'm super grateful for Big Garden, and I'm so glad that you took the time out to visit with me today. Thank you for having me, Andy. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Amy, for joining us today. Um, tell us about yourself. Thanks so much, Angie. And can I just say that I love that you were doing this because I always love the community programming at Film Streams. And this is just a great way for to continue to educate and connect with people out in the community. So thank you for doing this and thank you for having me on. So everyone, my name is Amy Mather. I'm the Adult Services Manager for Omaha Public Library. One of my main jobs here is I oversee a team of 11 librarians with each with a subject specialty. So I'm actually sitting in today on behalf of our urban gardening librarian as an example of a subject. So tell me more about the seed library. Sure. This is a new thing, right? Like, I feel like it hasn't always been around. Actually, it has been around for nearly 10 years, and it's okay. I'll, it's kind of one of the funny questions that we have been getting in the past year, and I think it might be probably, not might, probably due to the pandemic and everybody going inside and, and learning and doing different things that they normally haven't done. So our seed library actually started off small, very organically. Um, <laughs> in 2012 okay. so yes and it the idea came from Betsy Goodman who was a like a mover and shaker in local sustainability permaculture and she brought the idea to some to someone who worked at the library at that time and we talked about it we got a team together we discussed it we looked at the best practices of what was happening around the country because seed libraries were starting to sprout up <laughs> Love it. Oh, uh, thank you. And then we we launched it. And so we have been expanding that and it has been growing and growing and growing. And literally this past year, so our circulation of seeds keeps growing and growing. And we have um keep, folks can and all our libraries are open. So that's another thing just to make sure everybody knows all libraries are open. And we have actually a seed 
like library, which is an old card catalog. You can open up the doors and find what you need. And we have those at Benson Branch, Bess, um, Johnson Elkhorn, Millard Branch, and South Omaha Library. And, but you can order those seeds using your library card and pick them up at your branch, whatever branch that is for you. Do we have, like, do you require people to return seeds? No, we don't. Um, one of the things that we um, have have talked about though is that we love the idea of, of um, saving seeds. So if anybody is a seed saver and knows how to do it and wants to bring that back to us, we would love to have it and we will certainly add it to our collection. So do you see more people growing their own gardens, like personal gardens? Yes, I well, I would say yes. However, it's not. We know that our checkouts are rising, like all of the time. So our seed growth for circulation has grown um, every every year, and we did see a significant growth over the pandemic. And I do think it's because people just went in to like rediscover different hobbies, and how to. How to do something different inside their own home instead of being outside of their own home so yes we have seen a huge up uptick in that and i do um I, i'll be anxious to hear even though it might be anecdotally but um to see what people are growing i'm, I'm very excited to hear <laughs> <laughs> I know my husband and I definitely grow food. Um, we use the common soil seeds, some successes, some not successful. And that's what it's all about is trying to figure out like your own garden and trying to figure out what you can grow and don't grow and what, be what feeds your soul. Yeah. Um, do you have maybe a film or two that you can uh, recommend to us that is like an essential essential Amy Mather pick. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. I think one of the most memorable films that I saw at Film Streams uh, many years ago was called Seeds of Time. And I just really loved watching that because it really, really um, dives deep into why it's so important to actually save seeds and what this means for all of us for like um, like sustaining human life, not only the earth life, but also the human life, because it's really important that we're, we always be able to grow our own food. So I highly recommend that movie. One other one that I would recommend is, is called Kiss the Ground, and it talks about, um, you know, the sustainability of earth ourselves, like how to just really be more aware of like, what we are doing to our earth and, and through like our growing through through recycling and everything else. So I would recommend that one too. Fantastic Fungi, directed by Louis Schwartzberg. A descriptive time-lapse journey about the magical, mysterious, and medicinal world of fungi and their power to heal, sustain, and contribute to the regeneration of life on Earth that began 3.5 billion years ago. Check out the seven pillars the filmmakers have identified on how you can take action now for a better world to come. Dolores, directed by Peter Bratt. Benjamin Bratt's brother, actually, one of the most important yet least known activists of our time, Dolores Huerta was an equal partner in founding the first farm workers union with Cesar Chavez. Tirelessly leading the fight for racial and labor justice, Huerta evolved into one of the most defiant feminists of the 20th century. And she continues to fight to this day in her late 80s. Princess Mononoke directed by Hayao Miyazaki. Princess Mononoke might not be the first film you think of when you hear Studio Ghibli or Hayao Miyazaki, but that should definitely change. Charged with an environmentalist spirit, Princess Mononoke is a total gem, complete with super complex female characters, beautiful am animation, and a truly poignant narrative. Princess Mononoke is for lovers of anime, environmental warriors, and film nerds who enjoy tough but meaningful narratives.
Thanks so much for hanging out with us. If you'd like to get involved in community efforts to celebrate Earth Day and take care of our community, reach out to the organizations that we've talked about. We'll put all of their information in the video description below. Until next time, stay safe and stay connected.